1990, the United States of America produced a mere 2,789 gigawatt hours of electricity from wind power. But in 2023, it's expected to generate about 210,000 gigawatt hours of electricity, or 12.4% of the country's total power consumption. Wind and solar are two of the fastest growing renewable resources in the world. However, there is a huge problem brewing and it is causing serious ripples in the renewable sector. Corporations across America are opting out one after another from the whole wind power business and wind power mega projects are either put on hold or have been suddenly canceled. These sudden decisions are not just causing a negative economic impact but are also jeopardizing America's goal of achieving 100% clean electricity by 2035. What is happening? Why are these corporations halting wind power projects? Who is to blame for the crisis? And what are the solutions? June and July 2023 have been nothing but a catastrophe for wind energy mega projects in the USA. Almost all of the big players in this sector have halted or are pulling out of the whole wind energy sector in America. The biggest names who are quitting wind energy in the USA are multinationals such as Shell, BP, Denmark's Orsted, Norway's Equinor, Spain's Iberdrola, Portugal's Energes de Portugal, France's Angie, and France's state-owned Electricite de France. These are just some of the names. In reality, there are hundreds of small and mid-sized companies in the US that have been canceling or halting wind energy projects. Another major blow that has just hit the market is a $17 billion plus disaster at the world's second largest wind turbine manufacturer, Siemens Energy, which caused its stock price to go down by 37% upon the announcement that quality problems at its wind turbine unit would take years to fix. These are not minor problems since they are serious manufacturing defects that include flaws in rotor blades and bearings that could result in anything from small cracks to component failures requiring the replacement of the entire turbine. Now, the company is saying the problems may affect up to 30% of the more than 132 gigawatts of turbine capacity it has installed worldwide. Many of these turbines are installed offshore, making repair or replacements much more difficult. There are also cost and profits issues. For example, according to Shell CEO Yael Sawansa, Shell won't build renewable projects that can't earn initial returns of 6% to 8%. He said that mere days after a Shell joint venture said it would pull out of a massive wind power contract in Massachusetts. All of this leads us to the big why. This was not an easy question to answer. However, we did find the answer and it is quite disturbing and tragic at the same time and will shock you. It has nothing to do with profits or cost or even the technology. Modern wind turbines have been improved beyond imagination and are very green to make and maintain. They are also more efficient than ever and produce colossal amounts of electricity. So what on earth is really happening? Here is the summary of the answer. There are more wind energy projects in the USA than the US grid and flawed power distribution systems can handle. Additionally, companies are forced to foot massive bills to improve or create new distribution systems, which include power lines and transformers, among other things. Sometimes hundreds of kilometers away from the wind energy farms they are building. Sounds crazy, right? Well, it is, and about 70% of the problem can be blamed on the system, because if these problems did not exist, as much as 25% of the US total electricity consumption could have been from wind power a couple of years ago. Anyway, here are the details, and please get ready to be shocked. There are thousands of wind energy projects that either have been built recently or are under construction or are proposed that are waiting in a long queue to be connected to the national power grid in America. These projects are worth billions of dollars and also cost billions 
to be able to connect to the grid, not to mention a lot of time too, and simply more than companies can handle. Solar and wind energy projects are not some magic and free projects designed to save the world. These projects are a result of government actions and legislations that force corporations to invest in the field of renewables in return for limited incentives or face hefty penalties. Hence, these projects have to be feasible, profitable, and implementable, otherwise corporations look for something else. So, let's say you are rich and decided to get into the business. You went to Maine and leased a 3 or 4 square kilometer area on land in the Atlantic Ocean to build 1,000 commercial wind energy turbines. You allocate the funds, get some incentives from the government, pay your fees, and off you go building this energy mega project. Now, it is time to have it connected to the grid, but you end up waiting for years, and you also get conditions from the state and companies that own the local grid to which you want to connect to, asking you for 100 or 200 million dollars so that they can accommodate the distribution of your electricity. You gladly pay the money and are told to hang on in the queue because you are not the only one. Now, here is the pickle. How long are you willing to wait while your investors ask for their returns and detailed financial reports while the project keeps costing you money as it idles? Right now, more than 15,000 energy projects are waiting for permission to connect to the electric grids across the USA. Some of the examples include delays in the installation of 3,000 acres of solar panels in Kentucky and Virginia. Wind farms in Minnesota and North Dakota have been abruptly canceled, and programs to encourage Massachusetts and Maine residents to adopt solar power are faltering. There is no shortage of wind energy investments. However, the volume of projects has overwhelmed the nation's antiquated systems for interconnections. So many projects are trying to squeeze through the approval process that delays can drag on for years. There is no magic trick to this issue because the network of power lines and transformers that moves electricity from the spot where it is created to cities and factories is not a single network, nor is it able to handle the pressure. There are more than 60 networks operated by various and sometimes overlapping authorities that involve a lot of private corporations. They too have to be feasible and make money. For example, PJM Interconnection, which operates America's largest regional grid, stretching from Illinois to New Jersey, has been so overwhelmed by connection requests that in 2022 it announced a freeze on new applications until 2026 so that it can work through a backlog of thousands of proposals, mostly for renewable energy. It now takes roughly four years on average for developers to get approval double the time it took a decade ago. And when companies finally get their projects reviewed, they often face another problem. The local grid is at capacity, and they are required to spend much more than they planned for new transmission lines and transformers, among other upgrades. Believe it or not, fewer than one-fifth of solar and wind proposals actually make it through the so-called interconnection queue. In a nutshell, it doesn't matter how cheap and green the clean energy is, if developers can't get through the interconnection process quickly enough, more and more wind and solar projects will fail and the US will not be able to achieve its zero emissions goals. Grid operators also have their hands tied behind their backs and cannot magically cough up tens or even hundreds of billions of dollars to upgrade, expand, and improve the grids and connect new projects faster. So, is there a solution? Yes, there is, and it all has to do with money. Yes, good old money. If enough funds are provided by the central government to states and their prospective grid operators for the purpose of speedy and effective expansion and improvement in order to connect thousands of new wind and solar projects the problem would go away, and the U.S. could achieve its zero emissions goals much faster. However, such a solution is easier said than done since politics, elections, and greed are involved. Do you think these interconnection and related costs problems are an easy fix, 
or will take years to tackle? Let us know in the comments section. Thank you for watching and please like, share, subscribe and hit the bell icon.